Hey everybody, Z with ZNG Emporium, and in this video we're going to be talking about negotiating. Something they don't teach you in school, but you pretty much need to know. Uh, if you're doing this kind of hobby, you know, buying and selling stuff, there's a lot of, you know, back and forth negotiating that you have to learn. And they just don't teach you this in school. I don't know why, but they don't. Uh, but just going to be going over a few things that I've learned over the past few years. Now there's no perfect negotiator. It never is. Everybody that walks on like a, you know, a, a car lot... Really, from, you know, 1% wants to buy a car to 99% wants to buy a car, you know, but you can't always sell the car, okay? So, there's no perfect negotiator, there's no perfect uh, salesman, but I'm going to teach you a few things that I think I've learned over the past few years. I'm going to be looking at some modern cards, mostly, because, you know, people love modern, they hate vintage. Talk about vintage, do you guys know there seems to always be a number in base set boxes? Does that mean this is the 1,049,000th and uh, 60th? base set box ever printed is that what that means i don't know there seems to always be a pretty high number on these boxes anyway let's get into this let's look at some uh, modern cars because that's what everybody that's what everybody loves right nobody loves vintage boo vintage um but yeah just four things that i'm gonna go over quickly first of all when negotiating this is mostly talking about buying and selling pokemon but you can apply this to a lot of other stuff too uh so the first thing is don't be greedy what do i mean by that um, there's a lot of people who, uh, they'll be nickel and diamond, right? It's like, especially people who find a really unique collection and you might find something that's, you know, if you're in this a long time, you'll find stuff that you'll be like, Hey, I don't really see that often. I really should just take what they're asking. I can probably figure out how to make money on it. Uh, but a lot of people nickel and diamond, they get a little too greedy. And then all of a sudden the, 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 the person who's selling it to you, just gets a little annoyed. If they just get a little annoyed, even if you come back and just try to patch it up, they might just leave you forever and they just don't respond. Especially online nowadays, a lot of this is just back and forth on, you know, email or messaging and they can just ghost you all of a sudden if it just doesn't work out. So know what, you know, this is a lot of it is you really have to know the market. Uh, but at the same time, there are a lot of people that just try to dip a little too deep in the cookie jar, right? I mean, do you need a, some people like need a hundred percent profit every time and there'll be somebody who swoops in who, uh, can just take 50, right? I mean, you just can't, you can't be greedy every time. Uh, number two is that, uh, be kind when negotiating, be kind, but don't be, uh, don't be too kind. Okay. And what I mean by that is that uh, a lot of these people with, you know, you go back and forth and it's like, oh, yeah, that's great. That's that's wonderful. That's exactly what I, you know, I want and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, yeah, yeah, I'll take that. And, and then they push a little bit. And then what happens? And then they want a little more. And then you're like, oh, yeah, OK, fine. And then you start to be a pushover. And then they're just going to keep pushing you until you absolutely, uh, you know, it's out of your price range at that point. Or somebody else comes in and they become like the one I said before, don't be too greedy. Uh, you can't be uh, a little, whatever the opposite of not being greedy at all is. Uh, I'm just putting kind in this in this context, but um, if you've done a lot of dealing, you know what I mean. You just got to sometimes, you got to know your number. I mean, you can price it under at first, right? You can say, hey, I want this much, and then you can move up a little bit. But don't, you know, you got to set a number at some point, right? And say, hey, this is, this is my final number. That's it. Let's go from there. Um, so number three is, uh, is that, uh, no, the birds, uh, I was going to say, is that expensive? Oh, wasn't there just, where did I miss it? Uh, well, I completely, uh, blanked. Oh, lady, isn't that expensive? Maybe it's not. I don't know. Maybe it's just in Japanese. I know this one, a lily, I know that's, uh, or it was pretty expensive. I don't know if it is anymore. Number three is, uh, don't say the number first. Now this is just kind of, uh, it's something that a lot of people know. Uh, if you say the number first, if it's like, hey, they put like a big collection, a big binder stuff, right? And they're like, oh, what do you want? Try to have them say the number first because it gives you a number to start. Have a number in your head, right, that you know. Of course, we all know that you'll look at it and be like, hmm, I really want it for this. But maybe it'll offer a little bit less than this and blah, blah, blah. Let them say the number first. I tell you what, it's going to give you leverage 100% of the time uh, because... What's the worst that can happen? They throw out a number and it's way too high. Well, then, you know, you didn't even want to start negotiating at the, at, the, at the offset. They say a number and it's close and you can maybe get them a lower. Or, you know, best case for you, if you are a, you know, flipper, dipper, ripper, 
is that, uh, why am I breathing hard? I think it's because I just ran up the stairs. <laughs> um, you know, the best case scenario, right, is that they, uh, they say a number lower than what you were thinking. And then you're like, ah, yeah, I'm going to, let me think about it. Okay, I'll take it, right? So uh, try to get them to say the number first. And that's kind of a, a big thing, right? Uh, last, but certainly not least, oh, looks like, I think I have some here at the very, for some reason it kind of skipped a few pages. Uh, last but not least is that um, know your place, okay? You have to know your place. And what I mean by that is that, you know, if you're selling, if someone's buying, let's say, an Umbreon VMAX PSA 10, right? And they throw it up on Facebook Marketplace or wherever it is, uh, eBay, it's newly listed, they just listed, then you say, hey, 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 hey. Can I get that for 850? Uh, know your place, okay? Something that's really high in demand, that's selling for, has multiple, it's, it's selling every single day for $1,000. Where is your leverage there? They, you're, you're, you're just, you're just trying to hope, right? You're just, you're just sucking down copium at that point. You're just, you're just throwing darts at the, uh, at the dartboard uh, with a blindfold. Know your place. Now, if you have a very niche item, no, you put no. You can probably negotiate. There's probably not going to be as much demand. There's going to be not many people looking for it. Now, granted, once again, it's about knowing your place. You know, if it's a rare thing like, hey, it's a a shadowless long crimp booster box, right? That doesn't show up too often, and you're like, oh, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna keep lowballing because nobody wants this. Well, that does have a high demand. It might not have a huge buyer pool because it's very expensive, but you know, if you're dealing with something like a base set Charizard Unlimited, right? PSA 7s go for like 300 something dollars all the time. It just, it's just, it sells all the time. PSA 6s go for 200 something, sells all the time. PSA 8s go for 400 something. PSA 9s, we've sold a lot of PSA 9s at auction. They always go for like a thousand bucks every single time, no matter what. Um, so if you're going out there and you're reaching out and something that has a whole lot of data and has a whole lot of sales and you're trying to, uh, you know, play that game, know your place. You don't really have much leverage there because they could easily just wait 10 minutes and it's sold. Or they can, you know, respond to you. You know what I mean? N know what you're actually dealing with here, right? If you're dealing with a whole lot of, let's say, uh, bulk Vs, right? I mean, there are a billion of these, right? There, there's, there may be a trillion of them. I don't know. That's something that you can maybe, you know, work with someone. If they're at a Collecticon, they had got, you know, stacks of these. It's like, well, can you take uh, X amount and you kind of work them down, right? I mean, you see what I mean? It's the negotiation, uh, it, it, it absolutely has to do with what cards you're dealing with as well. So know your place with that. So know your place, don't be greedy, be kind, but don't be a pushover, and uh, let them say the number first. Anyway, ugh, man, why am I breathing so hard? I, I need to work out more. Anyway, guys, thanks again for watching, and we'll uh, talk to you again soon.